It's another week filled with basketball as the women take on UConn and Florida and the men take on LSU and Kentucky. Let's see how the Gamecocks fare this week. This is Capital C Sports. Welcome to this week's episode of Cap C Sports. I'm your host, Shannon Mack. On Monday, the Lady Gamecocks took on national powerhouse UConn in a highly anticipated matchup between the top two teams in the nation. The Lady Gamecocks went into the game with a 22-0 record and are trying to get their 45th straight win at Colonial Life Arena. Lauren Schwartz was at the game with the coverage. Number one ranked UConn is in town tonight, and the number two ranked Gamecocks are looking to upset them in front of a sold out crowd. An undefeated season is at stake, and they're up against a tough UConn senior class. Let's see if the Gamecocks could pull it off. 18,000 fans packed Colonial Life Arena for the most anticipated matchup of the season. A Gamecock win over powerhouse UConn would mean the Huskies' first loss in 60 games. A Gamecock loss would be their first at home since February 10th. 2013. Both teams knew they needed to come out from the beginning with their A game. The Huskies jumped out to an early lead, but the Gamecocks got off any shots they could to stay close behind. They still struggled offensively against the relentless defense of UConn, and their situation only got worse when top scorer Asia Wilson left the game with a leg injury in the second period. Luckily for the Gamecocks, Sarah Amovia came off the bench and had herself a night. She provided the spark for the Gamecocks to make an offensive surge late in the first half. They trailed UConn 35 to 25 going into halftime. The fans kept the energy going into the second half of this intense game. Without Asia Wilson, the Gamecocks struggled to hold off UConn. Sarah Movia was one of the few players that found her shots falling in during the third period. Wilson returned to the bench during the third, but the tape on her shin was the unfortunate reminder that she wasn't 100%. UConn continued to pull away as they hit shot after shot. With the combined efforts of Wilson and Amovia, the Gamecocks battled to hang into the game the best they could. They drove hard into the paint for layups and drew as many fouls as they could. Even when they did get their shots to fall, UConn would come right back with their own. The Gamecocks couldn't step up to their level and fell to the Huskies 66-54. to Coaches and players of both teams reflected back on the game. We knew we were playing a great team. We knew we were playing a, a, a team that is almost unbeatable on their home court. And they're probably going to go back to the Final Four like they did last year. They're that good. And when my guys know that, that the challenge is huge, those three seniors usually come up huge. These are the reasons why we come to, to UConn is to play these, these big time games. and. You know, to be at someone else's home court where they have a, a sellout crowd and everyone's cheering against us, um, that's exciting for us. You know, the odds are against us and we have to find a way to fight and win the game. When the ball's not going in, you really want to try to force something up because you see the other teams doing, they're putting up numbers, but you really just have to stick with the system and I feel like we had kind of a hard time doing that because we were just so anxious to get something up because we knew we couldn't have a dead period where we didn't score any points. So, I mean, it is tough. It is tough, but I feel like we're on our way to work there and I think this game uh, really did us good justice. I think it's a good game at a good time, you know, especially when, you know, you know, we can have a sellout, especially when, you know, we got two you know, top teams in the country. I think it's just great for women's basketball. You don't get this kind of hit, you know, in in conference play. Um, and, and for us, you know, it's a month outside of March Madness. You you get to measure yourself against the top team in the country, and and hopefully you you can utilize this game to work on some of the things that you know separate you from you know winning a game like this. It may have been a loss for the Gamecocks, but they can take a lot out of this game and learn from it. Holding UConn's dominant offense to only 66 points is an impressive defensive feat. The Gamecocks look to bounce back against Florida on Thursday. For Capital City Sports, I'm Lauren Schwartz.
Moving on to men's basketball, the 20th ranked Gamecocks took on Ben Simmons and the LSU Tigers on Wednesday. The Gamecocks entered the game tied for first place in the conference and looked to take sole possession of it on Wednesday. Ben Parsons was at Colonial Life Arena with the coverage. We're here at Colonial Life Arena where the 20 and 3 Gamecocks are taking on the 15 and 8 LSU Tigers. The Gamecocks are coming off an upset victory on the road against Texas A&M and look to stop Ben Simmons in this marquee matchup in the SEC. The LSU Tigers came out the gate hot from behind the arc, hitting six of their first nine. However, the Gamecocks responded with a three of their own from Cochinus. Good ball movement set up Dwayne Notice for his second triple in the first half. Ben Simmons split the Gamecocks double team for a wide open layup. Simmons dunks the ball emphatically after the whistle and stares down the student section. P.J. Dozier hits the killer crossover jump shot over Ben Simmons and picks up the foul. Dozier played like an All-American, scoring 10 points in a spin of three minutes down the stretch as the Gamecocks pulled away in the final minutes, winning 94-83. The Gamecocks defeated the LSU Tigers tonight 94-83. Sedaris Thornwell led the way with 24 points and P.J. Dozier came off the bench with 12 of his own in the second half. The crowd was absolutely electrifying tonight as the Gamecocks held Ben Simmons to only 20 points. The next game, their next game is on Saturday at 12 o'clock against Kentucky and we hope the crowd brings the same atmosphere. On behalf of Capital City Sports, I'm Ben Parsons. Looking to bounce back after a tough loss against UConn on Monday, the Lady Gamecocks took on the Florida Gators in a marquee SEC matchup. Reporter Nathan Boone was at Colonial Life Arena for the coverage. The South Carolina women's basketball team looks to rebound after their first loss of the season as they welcome the number 16 Florida Gators to Colonial Life Arena. Let's check out those highlights. Asia Wilson grabs the rebound off the Donya Kleine miss and puts it up for two points. Great ball movement leads to a big three by Bianca Cuevas. Florida answers with a transition layup by Haley Lorenzen. Jatari White takes on her defender and hits a baby hook from the baseline. Then Donya Kleine with a three ball. Jatari White strips Florida's Simone Westbrook and hustles down the floor to get the assist from Bianca Cuevas. Khadija Sessions drives and kicks it to Tiffany Mitchell for an open three. Mitchell wasn't finished as she drives for two more. Sessions gets another assist, finding a streaking Asia Wilson. She finished with four assists on the night. Another easy layup for Haley Lorenzen off the pass from Kristanaki. Coates responds with two points down low that makes a great defensive play and finds Wilson down the court in transition. A big board from Jatari White, leading to the layup by Sarah Immobile. The Gamecocks would send the Gators packing with an 86 to 71 win. to lead the Lady Gamecocks into Knoxville to stay undefeated in the SEC. With Capital City Sports, I'm Nathan Boone. In an attempt to build off of defeating the LSU Tigers on Wednesday, the men's basketball team took on the Kentucky Wildcats at Colonial Life Arena on Saturday. Reporter Kayla Pace was at the game. I'm here at Colonial Life Arena where the Gamecocks are looking to take down the Kentucky Wildcats in a battle for the top spot in the SEC. Let's take a look at the highlights. This sold out, highly anticipated game drew a crowd of electric Gamecock fans, but the excitement would not last long. The game got off to an interesting start when Kentucky coach John Calipari had to be held back by his players after a disagreement with the ref over a technical foul. He was then ejected. The Wildcats dominated play throughout the game consistently leading by 30-plus points. The Gamecocks had a limited number of good plays and were ultimately unable to keep up with their SEC rivals. 
Kentucky point guard Tyler Ulis took control of the game with 27 points and 12 assists. Final score, Kentucky 89, Gamecock 62. This was a tough loss for the Gamecocks at home. Even after Coach Calipari got ejected in the third minute, Kentucky dominated the game. The Gamecocks were unable to get rebounds or make shots, resulting in an 89-62 loss. Carolina will look to bounce back next week against the Florida Gators. For Capital City Sports, this is Kayla Pace. Well, that wraps things up for us. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at CTS on SGTV. On behalf of Cap City Sports, I'm Chandler Mack. We'll see you all next week.